this is part two of my experiences with the Saima X8C. Originally, it was all part of one video, but after allowing me to spend an hour and a half uploading it, YouTube rejected it, then sent me a friendly note saying they would allow it to be shown if I'd send them all of my personal information. I said, well, that'd be great. We could be like friends and exchange information, and I told them I'd send them all of my info as soon as YouTube owner Sergey Brin sent me his bank account numbers and his mother's maiden name. Unfortunately, he hasn't had time to get back to me yet, so I broke it into parts. Now, for those of you who may not have seen the first half of this video, I want to reissue a warning, and I know everybody hates that. Uh, but this plane is not for beginners. It is difficult and unforgiving to fly, weighs about a pound and three quarters with a high definition camera on it, and is capable of smashing car windshields and seriously injuring people. Uh, the software that uh, runs the controller is horrendous. The plane wanders up, down, sideways, back and forth, all directions, at all times. Every second this plane is in the air, you need to be controlling it. And that's not that easy to do, because this plane is sluggish and vague. You have to think ahead at all times. It does climb strongly. It will lift a high-definition camera. But flying it is something of an adventure. So even if you've had a lot of experience, the first couple times you take this plane out, you want to be somewhere where there's nothing to hit, preferably some kind of soft ground so that uh, the plane won't destroy itself and you definitely don't want any people around you while you're learning this plane. Now in part one of the video, uh, we went over the camera that uh, comes with the X8, which is basically a 1992 web camera and a piece of junk. So what everybody wants to know is, can it fly a GoPro? Well, one more thing before we even get to that question. If you are contemplating putting an actual GoPro, an expensive one or one of the cheaper ones, on a hundred dollar plane stop if you're even thinking about putting an sj cam clone on this plane stop no matter how good you are you are going to crash and this plane will destroy the camera you need a 30 dollar car cam an sj 4000 clone of the sj cam clone or maybe best of all Banggood's Ambarella uh, that cost $68, something that's disposable. Now, I originally started thinking I'd put the car cam on. Uh, it runs on USB voltage, which is 5.0 and 3.29, which is what the standard X8 cam runs on, and it will start the cam, uh, but the car cam draws so much more, the controller reads that as a short and shuts everything off. So uh, I put that aside. Now the SJ4000 weighs 155 grams and the standard uh, X8 camera weighs 27. Now it's a sluggish plane and somewhat difficult to control with that camera. So I wasn't sure it was gonna fly the uh, SJ cam. I put a block of wood on it and it did uh, lift it. So then I said, let me do something really stupid. And I uh, put an SJ cam on the front edge of the plane. I used a helmet mounting tab and uh, a double stick tape and uh, it's well mounted. And uh, then I took it out. Well, there were 30 mile an hour gusts. So I said, uh, let me be a complete idiot and try to fly it 10, 12 feet above the ground and see how it looks. Uh, and it didn't look bad at uh, 1080 by 30 frames per second. It was uh, nice. I tried it with uh, 
720 at uh, 60 frames per second. I, I did not think it looked as good as 1080 at uh, 30, but uh, I, I was stoked. Well, the, the winds went down a little bit, and I said, let me get some high altitude uh, testing of it. And, uh, of course, as soon as I got to the turbulent layer of air above the trees, uh, the plane went into emergency descent mode. The controller read the adjustments and the turbulence as an emergency and put it into a straight descent mode. Uh, at, at the same time I was doing these tests, I had a minor crash, which is uh, uh, an example of what happens when you have little things go wrong with this plane. I was about 20 feet in the air and I tried to move it to the right as I was landing and it basically fell out of the sky. I, I got back on the throttle four or five feet above the ground and it landed on its legs uh, upright. But here's what happened. It had stress marks on the fuselage and the legs, uh, the seams of the legs popped open. Now, this was a minor, this was a hard landing, hardly a crash. Uh, also, the camera came off. The, the mount, which was held on by the double-sided tape, stayed there, but the, uh, the edges that hold the camera on shattered. Didn't do any damage to the camera, but that's a lot of force. I uh, decided that... Uh, it was really stupid to mount it on the front edge, which I'd done to try to avoid having the legs in the picture. Uh, so I found the center of gravity of the plane and decided to remount. This involved grinding off the original grooves on the bottom. Originally, I had it on the front edge and it uh, was moved backwards uh, about an inch, put it right smack in the uh, center of gravity. And I put some ballast in the protective camera case and flew it around and it was uh, almost out of control the whole time I was flying it. It did not go into the emergency descent mode, uh, but it just was simply unmanageable and this was a day without much wind. Uh, close to the ground, it was ridiculous. I wanted to fly it by the camera and uh, I made an unscheduled landing and I said, no problem. I'll just uh, go back up in the air, fly by the camera close and it'll be okay. Well, uh, maybe not uh, another unscheduled landing. A and that's the way controlling this plane is with the weight on it. Uh, now at 156 grams, I don't think the plane can carry it. The case alone weighs 93 grams. And uh, I thought, well, I need to get this much lighter to be able to make it manageable. So I decided to use what they call the belt cam. Uh, with uh, all the fittings and the camera, uh, we're talking a total weight of about 85 grams. Uh, so this is substantially less than 160 grams and uh, mounted in the center of gravity, uh, it seemed to work okay. Uh, I did put some uh, foam blocks on the legs so that the camera would be a little bit up further above the ground in case the ground was irregular where I might be landing. It's uh, a reasonably stiff mount, tape holds it solid, and uh, with the camera mounted directly in the center, uh, you come a lot closer to being able to control the plane than you do, first of all, with the case and the camera on, and certainly with it mounted even slightly off center. Uh, I do want to say that this is white knuckle flying here. This is planning out everything you're going to do a second and a half in advance or it's going to end badly. Uh, the video is also interesting. Uh, it is 1080 and uh, the thrill of having the video is not quite what you'd think it 
would be because it's uh, basically like an X5 uh, low definition kind of deal in high definition. Uh, you constantly have to adjust the plane and uh, it's very jerky. Now it was getting a little bit of jello still and the props on the X8 are actually heavy a couple tenths of a gram variation from prop to prop uh, but what's really striking is that every single one of the props on the plane is dramatically out of balance I mean not like a little like just really out of balance well there's a lot of videos on YouTube to show you how to balance props but uh, that's what I did was I, I balanced the props so that they'll stop in any position and uh, then went out and did some more video now it wasn't um, particularly more impressive and I think the the way that you're gonna have to use this plane is to fly it uh, like down a street or fly it in a manner where that you always have power on so that the controller is not trying to balance the plane as soon as the controller takes over uh, the whole plane shakes it's uh, kind of interesting how it happens but uh, the controller software is so bad that it's constantly overreacting and underreacting and uh, the, the video strangely is not terribly impressive uh, like I said it's uh, a lot like X5 video only in high definition uh, so unless you can cut up 10 second uh, segments of it it's it's not going to be too impressive so is it a game changer well it'll fly a high definition camera but believe me when I tell you uh, it is not a DJI clone and you will probably be quite disappointed with the video results you get and that's assuming you don't crash the plane and destroy everything.